guys, you can stop it now. I've I have listened to this record. You don't have to just comment it anymore, review it. Oh, you haven't listened to it yet. That is a disgrace. Yeah, it really is. It really is that I never heard this album before. But I've finally done it. This is the debut album by King Crimson, and it is in the court of the Crimson. In the court of the Crimson King. Yeah, like I said, the debut album by this legendary progressive rock outfit. Although not my favorite, I have to listen to more of the records, but I've heard that this right here is the epitome of progressive rock. Um, considered by many to be actually the first actual progressive rock album i'm not sure about that uh, but some people or uh, people commented on my video that it actually is the first one so um, i'm going with that because it was really early it was 1969 and this is of course the golden age of music a lot of legendary records like the self-titled zeppelin albums uh, abbey road this record came out tommy by the who a lot of legendary albums came out in 1969 and this is arguably the best one out of them all so you can already guess my rating but i'm i'm gonna continue a bit further um this album this album is progressive rock of course art rock classical folk avant-garde jazz fusion and heavy metal um, and that last one i'm not really sure because i've listened to it and it wasn't really heavy metal to me but uh, you can hear some early, some er, early uh, proto, uh, proto metal, proto punk. You can or not punk, but you can definitely hear some um, heavy drumming and some um, complex guitar playing on the record. But I won't necessarily call it heavy metal. But it is an early sign off. So that is pretty cool. That um, in the late sixties we already got some a uh, bit of heavy metal right there. Um, so arguably King Crimson is <laughs> the, the first heavy metal band together with Zeppelin, uh, Deep Purple. But that isn't really the case because we all know who was the really the real first heavy metal band. Uh, King Crimson is of course more of a, a progressive rock band. But let's get into the track listing a bit. Um, there are not a lot of uh, tracks on here, there are only five so uh, we're gonna talk about them briefly. 24th century schizoid man I'm not sure how you say that but uh, schizoid man is how I'm gonna say it uh, Yeah, this is a pretty interesting opener. It is uh, really quiet. It is really mellow uh, most of the time um, Through the midway section and through the end it gets a bit more heavier with uh, I believe Robert Fripp that is the the frontman of the band Yes, he is uh, Robert Fripp uh, just saying the the title track 24th century schizoid man and this is actually a. Um, th this is actually uh, something that is sampled. Um, because I've heard that, that they say the title track, the 21st Century Schizoid Man, um, just in the singing way, the beats and drums uh, towards it in the mix. I've heard it somewhere else. I'm not gonna say the name because that is really disrespectful to the. Um, to King Crimson, but the song is sampled. It is really, uh, really iconic. A really iconic opener at that. Really enjoyed the song. It was seven and a half minutes long, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I talked to the wind is the shortest song of the entire record, which is only six minutes and four seconds. Uh, this song is a bit more uh, acoustic. It is uh, the most simplistic song to digest. If some people want to listen to King Crimson but the normie is shit or something like that or they uh, they don't they can't take a lot of heaviness or a lot of complexity to their uh, tin skull then let them listen to I Talk to the Wind but if they are like that don't let them listen to King Crimson they have the top 40 for that but I Talk to the Wind is a very, uh, very relaxing song it is uh, very briefly over um, yeah, and the song is just really uh, relaxing to listen to, a great acoustic piece. Um, Epita is another song which has two 
uh, segways it has March for no reason and tomorrow and tomorrow this song is really really dark and industrial it is exactly the opposite the opposite of uh, I talk to the wind it is really really dark um, also mellow in place but most of the time this song is really industrial like I said uh, this song is really hard to digest because I can't uh, name a lot of details about the song it is just a really dark song and it is one of the first actual uh, prog songs that I've um, that's ever appeared because this is the first progressive album people say and yeah, Epita is especially a really really uh, great uh, experimental interesting song to listen to to close out this great side one that we have going here uh, and then we get only two songs on side two which uh, are arguably the best ones we get Moonchild and Moonchild is the longest song of the entire record clocking in at 12 minutes and 13 seconds and it may be the longest King Crimson all, uh, song of all time but I can be wrong about that let me know in the comments uh, Moonchild is a really really great uh, mostly instrumental piece which has two it has two segways it has two um, just two, uh, two, two sections it has the dream and the illusion and the dream is uh, it has a bit of um, vocals here and there it, it speaks it, it just talks about the dreams about the moon child about several problems so um, the the entire record isn't really um, commercially it isn't really friendly because moon child is not the uh, the kid friendliest song if you if you look at the lyrics so the dream is mostly uh, just really really catchy beats beats uh, really really great vocals by Robert Fripp uh, and the illusion is mostly instrumental and the illusion is uh, really chill it is really chilling to to listen to it is also really uh, just mostly no vocals I believe we get at the uh, the end of the song uh, a, b a bit of a, a goodbye speech by uh, Robert Fripp and I certainly enjoy the dream. The dream is a bit more uh, catchier. It is a bit more upbeat. And the illusion is uh, way more darker, way more industrial. So, uh, Moonchild is arguably a uh, I Talk to the Wind and Epita combination. If those two songs will make a baby, then you get Moonchild, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, great song. Arguably even better than those two combined. And. Uh, yeah, it is just a fantastic progressive rock song, I love it. And speaking of fantastic songs, we get the title track, The Court of the Crimson King. This song is so good, it is, it is great, it is amazing. Uh, we get two segues, it is The Return of the Fire Witch and The Dance of the Puppets, and they're both great titles, I love them. Uh, the Return of the Fire Witch, it, yeah, um, mostly... What you can get out of, out of the title is mostly in the song and what I mean with that is that the song is just pure fire, it is really really great to listen to. Just the fiery passion in progressive rock is really displayed on here. Uh, yeah, this is the best song by the way, the best song is the closer so that is always a good thing. I just really really love the, uh, the atmosphere in this song, I really love uh, when Robert Fripp is saying the chord of the Crimson King and the, the song gets all dreamy and you get an illusion in your head that you're just in a progressive rock heaven it really feels like you're going to heaven when you have this song on because it is just so heavenly it really feels like that and you can just feel that the birth of progressive rock is starting to bloom here and the dance of the puppets is a really nice closing to this great record and it is just mostly the same like the Fire Witch, only it is a bit more industrial again, it goes a bit more progressive, more instrumental pieces. And then we end one more time with uh, with Roald Fripp multiply saying the, the Court of the Crimson King. And then you get that heavenly chorus again. I really, really love this chorus. When Roald Fripp is saying the Court of the Crimson King, the title track, and just, and just when those instrumentals kick in, it is... It is heavenly, it is an orgasm. Um, yeah, you can already guess my rating. It is a 10. I really, really love this album. And I'm not sure why I didn't listen to this record earlier, but I've done now. And I hope you will shut up now because it was a great record, but a lot of people 
uh, wanted me to do this so uh, here you go this is the record and I loved it really really unpredictable ride but I mean everyone loves it unfortunately it is their best record I've heard so if you want me to do more King Crimson I can do that but it doesn't get better than in the court of the Crimson King in the court of the Crimson King it surely doesn't I hope you've enjoyed this album review I really love the record let me know what you think about it uh, yeah just in the court of the Crimson King it is a timeless classic I really loved it um, I I expected that but yeah I really did so I hope you did as well let me know what are your favorite tracks let me know what are your favorite King Crimson King Crimson album probably this one but uh, still let me know I hope you have enjoyed it and take care